We're pleased that Seth Rogen could join us live from Culver City, California. Good to see you, Seth. Hope you're doing well. I am doing very well. Thanks for having me. So before we get to the senators not attending your hearing, I, I want folks to understand why you're so passionate about this issue and how much this horrible disease has impacted your family. Tell us about your mother-in-law. Uh, yeah, um, my mother-in-law, uh, I've been with my what now wife for uh, almost 10 years. I met her mother when she was in her early 50s, and she was very shortly after that diagnosed with early onset Alzheimer's, and now she's in her 60s. Uh, early, by the time she was 60, actually, she lost her ability to walk, talk, dress herself, um, pretty much all of her motor skills and, uh, you know, the things that made her who she was were gone. And it was truly something that I'd never seen before at all. I didn't even know the disease could do that to people at all, nonetheless people that age, and I found it uh, really shocking. And it wasn't just me talking, honestly. I could totally understand if they don't want to hear the testimony of a stoner idiot actor, but <laughs> like the other five people who were talking were some of the most uh, educated and you know the people who are really on the forefront in the whole world as to trying to find a cure for the disease and statisticians that were explaining the financial toll. I mean, I actually probably had probably the least actual impactful thing to say when it came on government ramifications and they still couldn't be bothered to hang around to hear it. Honestly, to me, the most distressing thing is another senator who these guys actually knew was talking about how he had been diagnosed with Alzheimer's. And the whole point of a plea like that to me would be to get the personal connection with the people who are actually making these decisions and the fact that they weren't there to hear, you know, another senator talk about it was was it was a little upsetting to me. It's it's often said, and, and I think it's true having covered Capitol Hill, sparsely attended hearings are really not that unusual. Of the senators who were busy, uh, we asked every member of the sub subcommittee uh, where they were. Seven did not get back to us, uh, but 11 did. Uh, you know, Mark Kirk was, was with the astronaut and also the CEO of a planetarium exactly. in the state. Uh, one was at a funeral. Five others say they were meeting with constituents, and two were chairing their own committee hearings. I don't know if that reassures you at all, but that's what they were doing. It would have a bigger impact if they were there, and it would show people that it was a higher priority if they were there. One of the two senators who attended the hearing, uh, Republican Jerry Moran, he told us when we asked, quote, the most important thing to remember is that the Senate Appropriations Committee shares Seth's commitment to finding a cure, which is why we held a hearing on the subject, increased funding for Alzheimer's research by $100 million for next year, uh, to, uh, for fiscal year 2014, 20 million more than requested by the president, and increased funding for the National Institutes of Health by $1 billion in the last appropriations bill. What more, um, Seth, do you think needs to be done? Does funding, is funding still out of whack? Uh, the funding is still out of whack. Um, it is exponentially more costly than the uh, than other diseases that get you know more funding than it does. And um, it yeah, I mean it, it, it could use much more. I mean I feel like it is great that they did that, and I shouldn't scoff at that. It's a very large amount of money, and I'm obviously grateful that that's moving things in the right direction. But uh, yeah, I mean, I, one of the doctors who was there was telling me that people who are choosing what type of career they want to enter as doctors are less inclined to choose Alzheimer's as something they want to pursue curing because the funding is not steady enough to tell them as a doctor that it is financially a stable line of work to go into. And that to me was very upsetting. 